Welcome back to another inspiring episode of the Life Doula Podcast, where we delve into stories and conversations that enlighten, uplift, and empower our community. I'm your host, your Life Doula, and today we have a really special guest, a dear friend, Patricia Lim. Patricia is not only a remarkable breast cancer survivor, but also a dedicated cancer coach who specializes in addressing cancer in the workplace. Her journey from diagnosis to recovery has shaped her into a beacon of hope and resilience for many. Now Patricia passionately is giving back to the cancer community, guiding others through their own challenges with grace and compassion. In this episode, we'll explore Patricia's personal journey the crucial role workplace support plays in the lives of cancer patients and how organization can foster a more understanding and accommodating environment. Patricia's insights and experiences are sure to shed light on the often overlooked aspects of cancer in professional settings. So whether you're a cancer survivor, a love giver, a colleague, or even an employer looking to support your team better, this episode is filled with valuable advice and inspiration just for you. So without further ado, let's welcome back to the Life Doula podcast, Patricia Lim. Hi, Pat! Thank you, Cha, and thank you for having me again here at your Life Doula podcast. Okay, for those of you who are meeting Patricia for the first time, Pat, can you start by sharing your personal journey with breast cancer and segue into how it led you to specialize in cancer care within the workplace. My journey to specializing in cancer care in workplace began as a personal experience. Um, I was diagnosed with breast cancer in 2017. I underwent mastectomy, um, 33 radiation sessions, 16 chemo sessions, and now I'm on hormone therapy. And during this time, I experienced um, having to balance work and of course uh, my health issue and unfortunately um, during this time I experienced also um, the lack of support well kindness and understanding that a cancer a cancer patient um, at the workplace um, is, is going through the story is quite familiar and I know that Patricia and I um, thread the same path in terms of going through the cancer treatment while working. Yes. And uh, my work in human resources and in, of course, dealing with other cancer patients led me to thinking that there are many employees who are not equipped in um, handling employees in the in, in, in in the cancer space or supporting their um, employees who are love givers to cancer patients. In your experience, how do employers generally handle employees' cancer diagnosis? Are there common misconceptions or practices that happen? Well, generally, employers would um, handle um, cancer with a mix of empathy, you know, um, concern, and of course, there are some uncertainty as well. Um, some are unaware of some of the government provisions that are um, mandated for cancer patients. And sometimes employers would also tend to think about um, the impact to their business and, of course, um, loss of productivity whenever a cancer, uh, when, whenever an employee is, is um, impacted by cancer. 
I really want to pick up on the last note that you mentioned that unfortunately a lot of employers would have this knee-jerk concern of thinking about what the impact on productivity and in their business a cancer employee would have when they are diagnosed. Unfortunately, that's the immediate reaction. Yeah. How will it affect my business? Will she be able to deliver uh, the, the things that she's supposed to deliver? So these are the things that are real in the workplace, um, right? Yeah, and I think that brings me to your question a while ago about um, some of the misconceptions in um, of, of employers that cancer patients are unable to work. That's one. Um, cancer patients are always sick. Cancer patients are weak. Um, cancer patients are sometimes very emotional or too sensitive. Um, so those are some of the misconceptions that you know, employers have of, of cancer patients. There seem to be a lot of things that we can improve in how cancer patients are supported in, in the workplace. How has the pandemic, you know, impacted the experiences and the needs of cancer patients who are working? And has there been like new challenges that you know came out as an offshoot of the pandemic oh the pandemic has greatly affected everyone and most especially cancer patients a lot of cancer patients experienced delayed treatment delayed treatments there were no available transportation um, some of them um, reduced treatment because of lack of financial um, some of them, you know, um, fear you know, going to work because they're all immunocompromised. And unfortunately, there are some companies who use the pandemic to, in the guise of, um, in the guise of restructuring or downsizing, you know, um, prioritized removing those who are immunocompromised. So that's the s sad part there. But that's the reality that, that a lot of cancer patients face um, during the pandemic. And even as the workplace started going back to in-person or hybrid setup, uh, we have heard of stories where it's the cancer patients who are affected by what organizations call the right sizing. Yeah. You know, they're, they're the first to go. Mm -hmm. that, that's the unfortunate part. But how do you think employers can better support their employees who are undergoing cancer treatment, for example? Well, first would be flexible work arrangements. Um, it would be very helpful for cancer patients to have that um, accommodation so they can prioritize their doctor's appointments, they can pr prioritize their treatments. Um, and second would be a flexible working arrangement or modified schedule so they can prioritize rest and their well-being. Um, reduced workload, at least for the time being that they're on treatment, mm -hmm. and um, flexible leave policies would be of help. These are like really good wish lists because we've experienced it in better days that some of our cancer warriors are still not allowed despite medical abstract from oncologists. They're not allowed to work from home. Meaning, it's not that they're asking for special treatment, but as you said, at least during the time that they are undergoing treatment, they be extended a different type of working arrangements. Like, example, if, you know, three times a week, people are expected to come to work, maybe cancer patients will be given some leeways 
right? right? To be able to work from home. Especially if the nature of their work is does not yeah. need face-to-face yeah. or in-person. Well, um, when I was on treatment, um, di pa uso yung work from home. So I would, you know, go on treatment on a Friday. Then Saturday, Sunday, I'd take the rest. And then Monday, I'd go to work. And during my um, radiation treatment, I'd be at the hospital at 7 a.m. So I can be at work by 9 a.m. That, that, that was the same arrangement for me. I would go to the hospital at 7, get my radiation at 7.30. And because my office was a stone throw away from the hospital, I'd be in the office earlier than everyone else. But little did they know that I was experiencing so much fatigue because it's like a daily thing. What are some of the low-hanging fruits in terms of improving how cancer patients can be supported at the workplace? Because you and I know most of the changes will have to either be passed as a law or mm-hmm. for private corporations. They will need to get board resolutions for, for some of these to be in place. But Surely there are low-hanging fruits that, that we can institute in the workplace so we can properly support cancer patients. Well, first would be flexible and accommodating work schedule. Um, I think that's very important. Second would be emotional support from especially your direct superior and maybe your colleagues. Um, it, it's very important that you have a supportive working environment so that um, people would feel empowered that they are focused on their healing. Um, mental health resources, um, maybe you know, having books on, on cancer, books on how to support loved ones with cancer, um, Having coaches, having counseling sessions, that would be of great help to cancer patients. And sick leave, um, sick leave accommodations. Well, I think those are within even sometimes HR yes. policies that can be put in place right. uh, to further support um, people with cancer who, are, who need to work. Because there are people who can afford not to work. But for those who need to work, I think this, this tweaks and changes should happen. Pat, you mentioned about mental and emotional support from peers, from your boss. How important is this? Well, having a supportive environment um, reduces the stress and anxiety that a cancer patient experiences um, in in their um, cancer journey. Um, Having flexible working arrangements enables them to focus on their healing, focus on their schedules for doctor's appointments, and prioritize really their their hospital visits. Because sometimes other people would prioritize meeting over you know, going to the hospital for their checkup. Um, guilty. <laughs> so, um, there, promote, employ- well, all of these things um, are also important for the employers as this promotes employee retention. And of course, people see that you really take care of your employees. You know, I, I'm very blessed that when I, when I went through my cancer journey, There were no fixed rules or policies, but my employer, the Aboitis family, and even my peers and and colleagues were very, very supportive, like especially on days when the, the chemo side effects are starting to build up. They allowed me to work from home or they would adjust their meeting hours to my um, meeting schedule. Like, I know that at 3 p.m., my, my energy will start to drop. So most of my meetings, they agree to, to adapt or to adjust to when I'm available. So I think that's how important employers play in the role. I mean, in the scheme of all the things that a cancer patient 
will be anxious about if their employers are supportive. As you said, it will take away a lot of load no, from, from the employees. And I, 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 let me add to that, Cha. And I think um, this is where the role of human resources come into play. It's very important that human resources are really um, serious in their role as um, being human resources to the organization. And um, unfortunately for some, um, you know, they experience the stigma. Employees experience the stigma of, um, you know, that you're not able to work or you're sick or you're different. So some employees tend to really work hard and really show others that I am able, that nakaya ko, that I am strong, I'm, I'm still the same person. But the truth is, you're not. You're not the same person, your energy is not the same. You cannot handle the same workload while you are undergoing treatment. Yeah. So um, th this looks like a really big niche to focus on in terms of support. Support for employees who are undergoing cancer treatment, whether male or female. Let's talk about reintegration into the workplace because like you mentioned, you underwent 16 rounds of chemotherapy. So I think that happened in a span of, you know, eight months and then another 33 days of radiation. So that's, that, that's a lot. And even if you were working, the thought of you recovering from cancer and going back to the workplace, once you're done with chemo, a lot of people do not know that the reintegration, we deal with so many things. Like you doubt yourself, your confidence is really sub-zero, you look different, you're not the same person because you lack, you know, one breast or both breasts or even the ones that people don't see, you know, reproductive organs and all that stuff you are not the same person when you go back after treatment, right? So reintegration in the workplace, how can the organizations help make it a little bit easier for cancer survivors mm -hmm. to go to ease in the workplace? Well, it starts with um, education, awareness um, that, Cancer patients, while we would like to welcome them back to the workplace, they have physical limitations. As you said, your energy is not the same. You know, I, I, I remember I would conduct team buildings for, for 200 people and I was standing in front and then my um, colleague tells me, Ma'am, baba ka na kasi. Um, you're shaking, your hands are shaking. So um, I wasn't too focused on that. I was just focused on what I was doing. So there's, there should be that acceptance that you have your physical limitations. Second would be, of course, the emotional and mental burden that you carry um, after a cancer diagnosis. It's not easy, especially if you know there's some financial burden that you are experiencing. Second would be, as you said, it's um, being aware that these people are self-conscious and perhaps doubting themselves if they are still capable of working. Um, another would be change in priorities. Um, cancer patients will have that, you know, um, reflection yes. that what now? What what is what are your priorities now? Um, realignment of, of your goals. And if you're back to the workplace, then it's about readjustment of, um, to the routine. Yeah, and I remember even when you were undergoing treatment, you would still work until 9 in the evening. I know that because it's time for us to pray and Pat is still on the road <laughs> driving while joining us when we, when we pray at night. Uh, it looks like a lot of work. 
uh, to be able to do all of this, what are the most common, talk about, you know, um, reintegration. What are the most common misconceptions when a cancer patient goes back to the workplace? Well, it would be um, that they are disabled and unable to work. Um, especially if, you know, there's some loss of body part um, that that's very crucial. Um, and that cancer patients are always in pain. Um, you know, cancer patients or those in treatment um, will experience pain, but there are also days that they are well. So um, I, I think it's very important for people to know that, that they can manage that. Second would be that they're always sick or weak. That's a misconception na, oh, kawawa naman, um, cancer patient, no? Um, so it's very important that, you know, how we see people is also empowering them um, in, 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 in their journey. Um, that too emotional or too sensitive, you know, cancer patients are one of the most resilient people. Um, so you don't have to worry about them being sensitive or, or um, emotional. Yeah, after all, we <laughs> stared through death, so, you know, <laughs> it's not easy. <laughs> there are also occasions when cancer survivors are can not counted in. Meaning, if there are good projects, if there are good opportunities, they immediately count you out. Yeah. The misconception that because you got sick, there are certain things you, can, you can't do. And right? the worst thing is they do it in the guise of concern for you. Or compassion. <laughs> That's kind of hard to discern or, or um, be able to find out yeah. if truly they are doing it out of compassion. Yeah. But again, in reference to my employers, they, they would ask, they ask me, uh, there's this project, is this something that you can do? Mm -hmm. And they gave me the option to do it or not to do it. But it's still given to you. So, so there are a couple of organizations that have very good culture when it comes to this. But I think the greater majority needs a lot of improvement. Let's talk about self-advocacy. How can cancer patients advocate for themselves? And how can they communicate their needs in the workplace? What advice would you give them? Well, for cancer patients, it's very important for them to know that um, early communication is key um, for them to get the support that they need from their employer, especially a conversation with your human resources, a conversation with your direct superior. That's very important. Second would be establishing clear boundaries. Um, of course, when we advocate for ourselves, we advocate for our well-being. So we need to know um, what, are, what are we capable of, our availability, um, up, up to what time do we work, up to what time do we reply to emails. Um, collaboration, I think that's very important for um, cancer patients to know that, you know, very important that we collaborate with other departments as well. And open communication all throughout your, your treatment, all throughout your diagnosis. Um, key people should know about the, every step of, of your treatment journey. Yes, and there are certain policies that people may not be aware of that are right now in place. These are mandatory benefits. Can you mention some of them that maybe newly diagnosed cancer patients who are working do not know? The first thing that we advise cancer patients is for them to get their person with disability card. Um, that entitles them to a lot of discounts, especially during their treatments, hospital visits, um, medicines, and medicines, definitely. And then um, the Magna Carta leave, um, that's, that's when you're diagnosed, you're entitled to um, 60 days paid leave. And Magna Carta really is for women? Yes. Um, it's looking at 
really treating your your employees and making sure that they're able to go through procedures and go through treatment with pay. Yes. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. So there you go. Those are some of the benefits and different organizations would have their own, especially the private companies right. would have their own policies and benefits to yeah. support cancer patients, right? Pat has taken us through the many different aspects of how we can support cancer patients at the workplace. However, I want to talk about the community that, that Pat has built for, for her own niche. She is development director for Better Days, but she has her own coaching practice. Pat, do you want to talk about your growing cancer community as well? Okay, I have my cancer community on Facebook. That's Pats to Wellness. That's P A T Z to Wellness. Um, so I also have my IG and a Facebook page. That's also Pats to Wellness. Um, since I'll be focusing on cancer in the workplace, I'm also um, I will be also active in LinkedIn for for um, to reach out to possible organizations that would need help. This is really something that I think organizations, companies will have to start looking into because the sad part, Pat, you know this, that at some point, the ratio of women, let's just talk about women, women with cancer at some point would be 50-50, right? Mm -hmm. If you have 10 friends, five of them will be diagnosed with cancer, whether it's breast, cervical, or ovarian. And this makes it even more compelling for companies and organizations to really make sure that the workplace is also a supportive environment in the healing of cancer patients. I think there's a lot of work that you will be doing, <laughs> big lang anyone, yeah. that you will be doing. And for people who are interested, you are newly diagnosed, you want to be guided on how you can navigate through your cancer, please follow Pat at Pat's to Wellness or her own personal page because she also helps people who just message her randomly so patricia lim on yes. facebook yes. paths to wellness both page in and group page and group and ig yes okay pat thank you for shedding light on the various benefits and challenges that can support cancer patients in the workplace as we wrap up today's episode i'm reminded of the profound wisdom and unbreakable spirit we've witnessed Patricia Lim's journey from breast cancer survivor to a beacon of hope and advocate in the workplace has touched us all. Her story is a testament to the power of resilience, community, and unwavering belief in a better future for those battling cancer. Remember, the challenges we face do not define us. How we rise above them does. Let Patricia's journey inspire you to look beyond the obstacles and focus on the possibilities. Together, we can create a supportive environment that not only accommodate, but also empower cancer survivors and cancer patients in the workplace and beyond. Thank you for joining us in this enlightening journey. Keep believing in the power of love and support and never ever underestimate your role in making a positive impact. Until next time, take care and stay inspired.